How's it going, guys? Uh, this is a piece I've been working on um, about an artist from LA who takes great pride in uh, creating doppelgangers that make other people look really, really ugly. That's, I haven't got to that part yet, though. So. This is the beginning of the work. Um, I hope you like it. He shuffled through the crackling burnt wood and remnants of his studio and smiled. The charred and damaged half of a portrait he bought, he brought to life a little girl on the Venice promenade. A grotesquely overstated caricature. Half of her broad smiled, smiled face gleamed up at him. How many years it had been, he let out a halting laugh. The girl must be, must be a grown woman by now. Maybe with children of her own. Maybe even walking up and down the same promenade where, he'd, where she'd stood with an ice cream cone so many years ago, and he'd sketched her for $15 her father handed over with a condescending chuckle. Brunette eyes with hidden behind jewel Latin sunglasses. The little girl pouted at him between licks of her cone. Pout for the portrait, three licks. Pout for the portrait, three licks. She sat on a stool for him. What is that? She asked her daddy, pointing accusingly at the duct tape holding the vinyl seat of the stool together. It's fine, darling, her father said. It's only for a few minutes, right? The father looked at the painter. The man that was now here to immortalize his daughter in a humorous balloon-like sketch of little girlhood. Yes, just 15 minutes, the painter replied. His sketching pencils laid out on his left knee, he steadied the easel with his left hand, and with his right, whipped the multitude of colored pencils around in a frenzy. His eyes darting up to look at her, down to his work, up to his subject, over to her father. His artist pencil, a divining rod, leading to a prize that he could actually control and claim as his own. No matter if he had to hand it over to the little girl and her father, his signature would be on it always. She'd think of him when cleaning out her room before she left for college and think of what a great day she had. He'd found the perfect brown for her hair, the perfect width of pencil to del delicately brush eyelashes onto her face. He worked methodically, but with an artist artisan's caress. She was bound to hang the sketch over her designer daybed for years to come. He just knew it. He used a rich brown hue for, his, for shading her cheeks making sure to accentuate the impossibly high cheekbones. They seemed to hold up her whole frame, her aura, a marionette with strings attached to perfect facial features. No doubt another gift from her DNA. The same DNA turning her father's skin that dark olive tan. He'd be one of those guys that never applied sunscreen, never ever got so much as a fucking freckle, let alone cancer. Why did this man, her father, deserve such a perfect daughter if I had a daughter, he imagined, would she look like this? Probably not. The girl, his model for 15 minutes, was the delicate product of years of high breeding that only came with wealth. She probably spoke French and was starting on Japanese and ran track, fastest girl in school. She was probably the first to have a cell phone and have her ears pierced and get to wear makeup. And when she turned 16, she'd go pick up a car with her daddy and probably get a Range Rover or a G-Wagon. And she'd, pro and she'd be the portrait of virginity, even though she'd bang her way through the lacrosse team and a few movie stars that her dad worked with. And her dad was so, so proud. He wore loafers, no socks. And was that a Rolex? What a jerk. He was fooling with that, who was he fooling with that tan and gray hair? And was that a Virtu phone? Please. His right hand jerked and moved fast as he drew to her likeness. The pursed lips, the lowered chin, was something she had probably learned from her mother, or whatever skank, whatever, whatever money-grubbing skank her father had sub substituted for the position. This, she, she must have said, is how you get men, to do what you want. Just look at them like this, and do this with your eyelashes, see? She stopped, he stopped working, and looked at her for just a moment. She looked at him and cocked her head to one side, and lowered her sunglasses with the index finger and smiled a perfection of teeth at him. It was then that he heard the splat. It was then that he felt the spray of melted chocolate ice cream on his sandaled feet as the little girl, the perfect specimen of girlhood, 
threw the ice cream cone on the ground. Oops, she whispered, more mouth. He looked at the ice cream on his foot, then back to the girl. How's it going over here, Chief? The father had finished his phone call and was now addressing him. Looking down at looking down on his painter's stool. Almost done, sir, he said, still sketching. And as the blood ran from his face and into his hands, they became hot and red and swollen. And he smiled back at the girl, but only briefly. Then he went back to his $15 masterpiece. He'd finished the tiny body and string, string thin neck and, of the caricature. And then, about to add the piece de resence, the crowning jewel of her perfectly sculpted nose, he put down the terracotta colored pencil he'd been using to match her, ter her incredibly even tan, picked up a pencil off his, a pink pencil off his tray, put the tip on the paper, and started to draw a snout. Thank you.